see you there. Since you're here, do you want a tour? This is a tour of the 2019 Dutchman Kodiak Cub 175 bunkhouse that I live, work, and play in full time with my Seal Point Himalayan named Pearl. I'm going to show you some of my favorite features and give you my thoughts about this model. Welcome to my bedroom. This is my bed at the front of the camper. It is a short queen, which means it's as wide as a queen, but it loses about six inches of length this way. So my feet do kind of hang off the end if I'm all the way stretched out. Hasn't been a problem for me thus far. As you can expect, if you were buying an RV, the mattress is going to be useful for just getting a better sleep than you would if you were laying on the ground. So I changed that up and I added a mattress topper to mine, as most people do. Now if you're doing that, be careful. I have these little nuts right here that, um, that help the shades go up and down, and I only had about four inches of clearance between those and the bed, so I wanted to make sure I got something less than that. So all of my clothing outside of like tea for the queen stuff and if I need a good costume is located in these cabinets. I feel like I have plenty of room for clothes storage. So up here is all my folded stuff, what would normally go into a dresser. And I've gotten these things from Ikea that just collapse down. And so if I need something like way back here in the back, if I need to get my long socks, I can just take them out and then they go back up here, easy peasy. And I like that they're squishy because that means if I'm being lazy and I want to do that, I can do that. All of the cabinets have this glass, which I do think helps make the camper feel a little bigger. Right here was a natural place to hang my coat and my daily bag and my other coat. So I just added a command strip here, bing bang boom. Up here is some lovely art that my sister made of me. This has been in every house that I've ever um, decorated, and so it was the first, first piece of artwork that I put up. Up here is where I store all of my hats and gloves right now, since I've been in hat and glove territory. But it's just kind of a catch-all. I have my change jar up here, my alarm clock, some books that I intend on reading, and this goes all the way back. In the closet, as long as I'm using the skinny hangers, everything that I want to fit in here will fit. I actually have some room for more, but don't tell me that. In the back, there's even room for a big tub of the shoes that I don't wear that often. So I have a tub of shoes that I wear every day, but then those are the boots that I just couldn't get rid of. Also in this trailer, since my underbelly storage, I'll show you in a little bit, is under here, I can access it with this little trap door. Now, it might surprise you to know, but most travel trailers don't come with a big yellow armchair in this space, and this one didn't either. That was the first thing that I knew that I needed to change. Last I counted, I have one butt, and that butt, the cat's butt, is usually on my butt. So I needed room for one butt. The other problem was that those dinette cushions are re really uncomfortable, and they're only meant to be sat on 20 to 30 times. Let's be real, most people use these campers for 20 to 30 outings, maybe, if that, sometimes only two to three. So it wasn't enough to be my only place to sit in my entire home. Under here we have my freshwater intake, my city water intake, and my water heater. Also the outside sprayer nozzle. So I knew that I had to box these in because those utilities can't move. So we have this box here, and that was done by a local carpenter um, who my mom knew. And then there was the bench that was against this wall. So that, um, under that, there was an outlet in that bench, and then there was the wheel well, and then the coaxial cable. So this table is the cheapest, crappiest table that one can find at Walmart. And for right now, it's the only table I've been using. You could get a bigger table, Michelle. There's plenty of room. Only having the space that you need means that you're always gonna keep that space clean because you always need to be using it. 
Now another reason that I decided to take the dinette out is that for me, yoga is really important. Um, it's the way that I interact with mindfulness and keep from feeling like an unhealthy trollop. So with that dinette, I couldn't do yoga in here. Now I can't fit in here perfectly for yoga and I do have to completely dismantle everything that I have up, but it's possible and it's an option. And it was something that was really important that I wanted to make sure I could do in my home. Up here, you see my gallery wall. So I just added a couple of finishing touches. These are all on here with these uh, Velcro command strips, both so that I can trade them out and because you can't drill into these walls. They're cardboard. So up here, I have all of my um, work and paper stuff. So in these cabinets and stuff that goes on my tables. So in this cabinet, I have these paper boxes um, from Ikea. So this is all of my art stuff. So one thing that has been frustrating with this model is the, even though I love these uh, frosted glass doors, you have to be really careful that nothing is rubbing on them while you're going down the road. Like for instance, I don't know if you can see, there's um, a big old scratch here. Who knows what was rubbing up? There's some uh, marks up here from when some reeds were on it. So you just have to be careful and it's nothing I can fix and it's frustrating and annoying. Other miscellany and things in here. I like that I can pull it down, figure out what I need, put it back. I had already moved the big tall thing that I was setting the camera on because, like I said, doing this by myself. Um, before I could mention one of the things that made me purchase this trailer, and it's this window. If you're in a tiny space like this, you need all the light that you can muster. So that huge, giant window was a huge, giant selling point. And lastly, in this like main living space is my kitchen. Welcome to my kitchen. Now. It may seem small and that's because it is, um, but the cool thing is, so this is a two burner stove and this does have the glass that makes this fold down flat. So this is a flat top. I do have a vent hood that actually does go outside. So if I'm frying up hash browns or fish or anything else stinky, um, that goes right outside. The light, cover your eyes. It's really blinding. I know, I could send a signal to Mars. I love that we have the um, microwave. It's not a convection microwave. I wish that it was. Oh, I was looking for these. I wish that it was, but it's not. Um, speaking of ovens, I do not have an oven in this unit. And that's something that I decided was gonna be A-OK -okay because I have the room for storage of a toaster oven. And to this point so far, I haven't needed it. So what I really like about the kitchen is that it is so convertible. So um, this is how it usually looks um, when it's clean. Uh, I found this little, um, it's actually just like a little strainer um, that fits perfectly right there. That was from Ikea. This is an old thing that I used to stick to my wall in my apartment bathroom. Uh, but it won't stick to any of the walls here, and I really like that I can pick up all of my soap and tools um, and put that right there. So if this is out of the way, this can drain like a couple of mugs or some silverware or like the dishes from a single meal. I do also have the ability to put this in like this and have a huge surface with all of this put away. To like prep a turkey for my oven. Down here I've got basically everything that I need to cook. So my food is up there, my utensils are down here. And down here everything has a place. So these are from my great friend Gina. Um, they're actually for like a bowl so if you have like a hot bowl of something you can put it there and you can hold it. Um, these I've actually also found are really good, like if I need to stack things that I don't want to scratch each other on. Um, double purpose. So thanks, Gina. Your gift made the cup. Down here we also have my silverware because I didn't want to use a drawer for my silverware. If you see, 
these little locker shelves they stacked up i think they were about 2.99 each so now more than ever if you are planning on moving into an rv check out an ikea this cabinet up here is for all of the dry food that i want handy that i'm not afraid will fall and hit me in the face and kill me i decanted everything into ball jars because i found out that um one of the big ones fits under here and then two of these little ones fit under here. And I really like these blue jars, so I chose to do that. So down here we have all of my things that I, frankly, I put here because I wanna cook with things more often rather than make boxed meals. So this is my ingredient shelf. Up here is my boxed meals shelf. So cookies, crackers, again, stuff that I'm not gonna be afraid falls out on me. And the final very important part of a kitchen is the refrigerator. Now you remember that story that I started but didn't finish about why I bought a brand new Kodiak instead of waiting for a used one to come along? This is the second reason. So in the 2018 Kodiak Cubs, the sink was about this big and domed. So disavow yourself of that beautiful farmhouse sink. It looked like somebody took a football and pushed it into some Corian and called it a day. Also in the 2018 model, down here where my drawers are, that's where an apartment sized, no freezer fridge was going to be. In this space, they had um, more clothes wardrobe. As you can see, my clothes are fine. And the 2019 model came with a full size, well, full, small size, full enough for me, full size fridge and the big, huge farmhouse sink. So when I thought about my usability of this travel trailer, I knew I wanted those two things. I need to be able to wash my clothes. And like I said, that's my only sink other than my tub in the entire unit. So I needed it to be useful. And we've all been through having to meal plan with one of those half fridges that doesn't even have a freezer. Well, this one does. This is a two-way fridge. That means it runs off of propane or electric shore power, depending on what it can, can produce. Now that I've shown you the living area, why don't you catch up with Michelle outside? Oh, you finally got in there? Uh, she could talk for hours about how she's made this trailer a rolling home. But let me tell you, there is nobody better at cooking in an RV kitchen. Mm -mm -mm. Let's look at the outside. Here's the outside of our travel trailer. Now, if you're watching an RV tour, you probably know what's going on up here. This comes standard with two 20 pound propane and a deep cycle marine battery. Now, I believe this model was made to be a little bit more off-road capable than a lot of their counterparts. It is called the Kodiak Cub, after all. I do plan to take this thing to Alaska. One of those things is this metal kick plate. So um, these walls are, are one piece of material. It goes wall, styrofoam, interior wall. So if that gets chipped by something getting kicked up on the road, then that's an issue. So they put this kick plate here so that when I'm going down the Alaskan highway, um, it can kick up into that and not hit the hard to replace plastic. Also up here, we have our underbelly storage, which I think mine is pretty huge. And what Kodiak has done is add lights here and under. You won't be able to see them now because it's light outside, but I'll put some pictures. Anyway, this interior under here is lit and uh, so are the stabilizers so that, so that if I have to set up in the dark, I'm a little bit better taken care of. These goes all the way through and I can access them from either side. We've joked that my mom could probably live down there. I think she would. Here is a solar charge port for 10 amps. That goes straight into the battery, so it's not like an integrated uh, solar system with an inverter that I can run things off of, but um, it will help me keep my batteries charged when I have to go without electricity for a couple of days. That's the wind. Again, I wish you could see what I have this camera propped up on right now. Let's talk about suspensions. One of the most important 
things about your travel trailer. The thing that makes it not just a shed <laughs> is that it rolls down the highway on wheels. In the RV community, some tires are called China Bombs, which kind of feels like it's dirty to say in and of itself, but when you're buying a travel trailer, you pay a lot of attention to the tires. These are some great tires. I have 15 inch aluminum wheels, um, and like you can see these tires are pretty, pretty knobby, and I have a spare. So that was another reason that I really liked the 175 bunkhouse. It came with that. Also, if you are considering this model, I hope that you can see it next to some of its other like Kodiak Cub model numbers because this has about six inches more lift than a lot of the other models. Like I know that the, the model that has a slide, it's lower to the ground and the one that has a pop out tent, it's lower to the ground. And I think they did that because it's called the Kodiak Cub. <laughs> You're supposed to take this into a little bit um, denser, lush vegetation. So they gave you big tires and they give you some suspension so that you have plenty of room to go over potholes and things like that. For me, as somebody new to towing, I was afraid of two things in this whole grand towing journey. First, I was afraid that the truck was going to be underpowered. That's not been a problem. Second, I was afraid of trailer sway. Deathly afraid of trailer sway. I'd never towed anything in my entire life, so I was going into it blind. A quick interlude to talk about axles. Imagine this is a straight axle. How most straight axles perform is that you have this one piece of metal. Um, these are connected directly to your wheel bearings and your wheels spin. Um, and what impacts one wheel on one side will always impact the whole system. On top of that are leaf springs, which um, are intended to take those bumps in the road and take the load of your travel trailer sinking back down and take that force um, and neutralize it. So that's what a normal straight axle travel trailer is going to work like. I do not have a regular straight axle travel trailer. I have a Torflex axle. Now, if you go back to eighth grade and you think about your root words, we've got tor, which is short for torsion or torque, which is a twisting force. It is the force it takes to twist something. So flex and flexible. So this axle, instead of having a straight axle, first inside the axle of mine, there is a smaller axle, like a nesting doll axle, and that is surrounded by rubber. So that dampens some forces to begin with. And then instead of being connected directly to the wheel bearing, or whatever it is, if you're a mechanic, don't at me, instead of being <laughs> connected directly to the wheel bearing, it is connected to another suspension piece. So, so the suspension piece is attached to the wheel. And what that allows the wheel to do is move independently of the axle. It doesn't move entirely <laughs> independently of the axle because that's what the axle is for. But it means that something that's happening to this wheel may not impact the whole thing like it does with a straight axle. This wheel can kind of torque a little bit and the rest of the system won't be impacted. So that means when I'm going over potholes, ones that I look back and I brace myself and I say, ooh, I'm gonna feel this one, I haven't been feeling it. And my, my second biggest worry, trailer sway, I have experienced trailer sway. I've experienced it so bad that I screamed driving down I-70 hauling a U-Haul trailer. So if you've experienced sway, you know. You, you feel a little knock one way and then your truck goes the other and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you do something to stop it. It's scary. On this, which is much bigger, much heavier, much taller, much longer, one fewer axle <laughs> than on the U-Haul trailer, I would... I'm gonna pull a Jared Gillis from All About RVs because there was not a clip where I could actually spit out the words that I was trying to say. What I'm trying to say is I've interacted with the same environmental factors that caused sway on the U-Haul trailer. So I've been in really high winds, I've 
gone over some bumpy roads, I've made some quick maneuvers, things that definitely cause sway in the U-Haul trailer. So I think this axle has done a lot to prevent sway because I'll feel it. I, I feel the first knock to the right and then the second knock about the same as the first knock, not anymore. And then it just kind of settles out. I've never been in a situation where a maneuver felt um, unsafe or anything due to the sway that, that has been produced. I can say at this point, there has been no sway and I'm pretty sure it's because of this axle. I negotiated for a free backup camera uh, when I got this travel trailer. Problem is, it won't turn on. It'll turn on when I plug it in into my car. And these marking lights, oh yeah, they come on with my seven pin. That thing, not yet. I'll have to let you know. Shit flows downhill. And this is my lowest point. Those tours won't show you the black and gray water valve, but you know what? I'm an original. Really, I bring this up to talk about the tank sizes. I think that's another way that uh, Dutchman was really smart with this design. Most tanks you'll get an A size and then two B sizes for your um, black and gray. So you'll get 36 in your fresh, 24 gallons and 24 gallons in your gray and black. Now for the uninitiated, your gray tank is where your shower water goes and your dish water goes. Your black tank is where your other water goes. You're going to produce way more gray water than you ever will black water, hopefully. <laughs> so um, when I saw that these tank sizes were 52 gallons for fresh, which for one person can last me five days if I don't shower every day, <laughs> 52 gallons in the fresh, 39 for your gray and for your black 28. It makes so much sense to me that that 10 extra gallons of space is used for your gray water instead of your black water because that is the thing that will always, always, always be your limiting factor in how long you can stay not hooked up. There's also a pack and play door back here by which you can put bikes or kayaks or whatever you want to fit back here. I really like it because I use the underbelly of this bed for storage. So if there's something I can't reach from over there, you can come outside and get it from here. I store a lot of stuff under here. Currently we have my luggage. This is full of all of those clothes that I said I need if I uh, get invited to tea with the queen. This is the bedding if somebody comes, and these are the towels and um, things that I have pared down to for my personal bed. Yes, that is the wedge from my Anderson leveler. Why don't you just use a regular chalk, Michelle? Well, maybe. I drove over it. Ah, I see you're back from outside. She could talk about that Torflex axle all day. It's all I hear about. Now that you're here, let's check out the back room. Oh, you didn't think there was a back room? You thought we saw all the square footage this trailer has to show you? Oh, contraire. I gotta give it up to Chris at Kettleson Campers because the first time that I was looking at campers, we looked at a bunkhouse model and I said, I don't need bunks. And then he turns around and goes, but what about shelves? And I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh tricky mister. You make a really good point. Now, this is what they look like most of the time. Up here, I have some extra kitchen storage. This is where my coffee maker lives when it's not in use on the counter. It's just more dry storage. Down here, I have Pearl's litter box. Don't worry, if you sleep in this bed, I'll clean it. <laughs> That's always the question. What do you do with a cat's litter box? And then the follow-up question, does it smell? You figure out what to do with your cat litter box. Google it, there are many more better guides than me. Does it smell? Every once in a while. Same as having a litter box at home. She's worth it. So right now I have the mattresses pushed up to the back so that while they're not getting used, they don't get dirty or smelly. Um, and then I have all of my extra furniture back here. The table that was part of the dinette was a standalone table, so I still have that and I pull it out if I do need a bigger workspace than the little TV table that I have. 
Also back here is an extra chair for when I need another butts spot <laughs> out here. And it is where I keep all of my laundry. I feel like I've got plenty of room. This could be five times stuffed fuller and I'd be fine. It also feels great that if we're really, really all cozy, I could fit like four people sleeping in here. And when we're talking about places like Yosemite or going to Palm Springs, this can save our whole group hundreds of dollars in lodging costs if we can just have everyone shack up here. So while there's storage 99% of the time, the 1% that I have company, they have a place to stay. And let me tell you, this bottom bunk gets dark. You sleep like a rock. As bathrooms and RVs go, this one doesn't suck. My favorite thing about it is how much light it gets. Now the sun is going down, it's a Sunday, and I started filming way too late, but there is a skylight in this. And whenever possible, I have this door open because that skylight brings an amazing amount of light into this travel trailer. You can finally see my wonky camera apparatus in the mirror. And then behind the mirror, we have all of my necessities. As you can see, I've got plenty of room. This is everything that I need um, at a moment's notice. So makeup remover, lotion, dry shampoo, brushes, um, Q-tips, things like that. You can see my luxurious, huge his and her vanity. <laughs> and then below where you can't see is the commode. This incredibly flattering angle brought to you by trying to show you my bathtub. Now I say bathtub very generously. It does have more of a tub than most just shower pans. And I wanted to show you that I do store stuff in there. Also in my tub are my uh, shower mat and the things I use to shower and the toilet paper dispenser because every square inch of floor space is valuable in this travel trailer. And if you don't want to be kicking things at night while you're trying to go pee, you put the toilet paper holder in the bathtub so that you can stop the massacre of stub toes. Who knew I was gonna become such a utilitarian? One thing I did inside my vanity was make it my jewelry holder. So I just took these little command strips, just the little tiny hooks and put them up here on just the backing of the mirror. This is how it stays going down the road. And I've only ever lost one of these into the toilet accidentally by not thinking about it when I opened it. It got recovered. It was clean water. I washed it. This is my home. I hope you like this tour. It's kind of served as a review too. So if you've been watching this because you are interested in this model or you are a solo traveler looking for what type of rig might suit you best, I love this rig. I love it up and down and sideways. There are things that I didn't like about it but I either tore those out like this dinette or I honestly can't think of it now. I am so happy with this decision and I'm really excited to see where this thing takes me. If you're here because you know me and you glancingly care about what I'm doing and if I'm all right, don't worry. I cannot put into words how incredible this life is. It may not be incredible for everyone, but for me, I could not imagine a set of circumstances that I would rather have than these. You could give me the best apartment in the world. You could give me the house with the biggest yard. You could give me anything and I wouldn't give this up. Yes, I have stood right here and cried and screamed at that here because it was not coming on and I was not going to spend another tired night in the cold and I thought that I was at the end of my rope and I was going to have to go back to my apartment and admit defeat. Yeah, that's happened. <laughs> this change has been exactly what I wanted it to be and exactly what I hoped for and challenging in all the ways that I've hoped it would be challenging and beautiful in the ways that I had heard that it would be beautiful. So in so many words, I love it. And I could not imagine doing anything else. And with that, I am done filming for the day. Get out of my house.